Isso aqui, oh, oh, é um pouquinho de Brasil, ya yeah, yeah. Hi, today we're going to talk about combing. And there are different rules. I have watched videos from Judith McKenzie, from Robin Russell, and also Rita Buchanan that are big names in spinning and they have a load of experience, right? And, and this, what I'm going to do is just talk a little bit about what they do. Um, but everything I, I say, you have to see what works for you. And if you are into combing, I would suggest that you definitely get the video from Robin Russell on combing because she has a number of different combs that she uses differently. And what I like about those videos is that each time I, I watch them, I learn something different. And also, um, many of these interweave videos with these teachers that n have a lot of knowledge, it's good because sometimes people say, do this, but they don't say why you should do that. So in these videos, I get this aha moment. So, oh, that's why they do this. So I really recommend Robin Russell's video. But um, if you don't want, that's okay. We're going to talk a, a little bit about combing today. So we have commercial tops that are the preparation to do the combing. And then if you want a truly worsted yarn, you're going to start or with a commercial yarn like this. This is a Merino top. Or you're going to do, um, you're going to comb yourself, do your own comb top. So um, one of, of these classes that I watched, the person said that for you to get a truly worsted, you should start with a commercial top because the commercial top, they take all the short fibers and the fibers are all in parallel and you can do it yourself too. But this is a cheviot that I did from, um, a wool top and I think it's beautiful. And I think one of the reasons why it's beautiful, it is the preparation that it had so that I could spin it. And it turned out really, really nice. It's a three ply and I have a project in mind for it. Okay. So this is also spun um, worsted, um, but Navajo plied like the other ones here. And what I wanted to show you is that I dyed this in the crock pot, okay? And this is the kind of yarn that I got by doing Navajo ply or cable plying. Okay, so you get this from this. That will look different when you need to, but it's, it's kind of a nice, nice yarn. So we are gonna spin some of this too to see how we can get uh, the best color in it. And each teacher has a different take on it. So I'm going to talk a little bit about their different takes on each, on combi. Okay. So starting with uh, Judith McKenzie, when she's going to comb, what she does, she has white handkerchiefs. Unfortunately, I don't have white. I just have the red and I just wanted to do a test. So what she does, she puts the fiber okay, and for her, when she's doing some combing, what she wants to separate, she washes, she washes them in, um, in the handkerchief. And what she does is she looks for the same staple and similar crimps on the fiber. Okay. And I tried this and it's pretty good because when you wash, you keep the, the locks in the formation and then it's easier for you to use. So this is um, her take on it. Um, Bucana seems to comb everything before she even uh, uses it to, to card it. So it's a different take. Um, I talked to my friend Rosalind and the way she washes her fleeces is she gets them 
in a, a laundry cleaning thing, lingerie cleaning. And you see, I put the fiber there and she does the same. She puts it like this, tie both sides and wash it. Yesterday, I washed some of this beautiful, <laughs> wonderful, delicious uh, cormo fleece that she gave me. But because I wanted to be sure, I washed it like this, standing, and I wanted, I used the scour uh, power this time, the first time I used. I, I'm still drying the first batch. I want to see how it's going to work before I do the next one. But what it does, and I could see, is it keeps the lock formation. So I am going to comb this fiber. It's too beautiful. So I'm going to comb it, right? Okay, so we're gonna go into the the combing first and then we are going to spin a little. So going with the, the I, I did this for this video. So Judith McKenzie, she does her um, carding for, normally she uses for long wool. She doesn't do combing for, for short wool. It, as I, I understood. And you put the butt first, and you can put it there. And when you are a beginner comb, in combing, the less you put, the better it is. So one thing that I thought was very interesting in, uh, in Robin Russell's video is that she explained why you put the butt first. There are two reasons. First reason is that if you're doing a long wool, long wools are, have a lot of luster, right? And the luster that they have will show better if you put if you comb it, the, the butt first in your, in your fiber. When you buy a commercial top like this, when you're getting a comb, if you do this, you're gonna notice that one side is nicer than the other. This side is nicer. And the reason is because of the scales, the orientation of the scales. And this is what you get if you are combing and if you start everything from from the put the butt first right so I did all the butt here I put it out okay and normally I would comb it in the stationary thing but again Robin Russell was teaching how to do it and I really like it she says to do it standing and you're gonna see what's best for you, of course. And what you do is you get to the tip and you pull. And you get, and you pull. And you get, and you pull. So what you do is you keep a perpendicular formation to the thing. Oh, and then the other important thing that I didn't do here is you see how much static you have here? So many people, including Robin, and Robin has a, a recipe for that. What you're gonna do is you're gonna spray your fiber a little bit to diminish the static. And I always thought to myself, I don't care about the static, it's okay. But in this video, I also learned that even though I don't care about the static, what it's going to do, it's going to increase the amount of loss because you are always going to have loss when you are combing. So once you took most of the fiber that way, what you can do is put it down, upside down, and then go on taking the fiber, right? And never facing you so that you don't get hurt. In the Middle Ages, they used the combs as torture instruments, and we know why. So I'm gonna take this off. I'll put this here. And 
what she does is then she just comes and put it back in the session area. I normally prefer to just change my hands, but for purposes of this video, I'm gonna try to do it like that. Another interesting thing that she said is that, you see how this is not loose enough? Uh, she says that when you see that it's not loose enough, go there and take it back and put it there and then go back to work on the second pass of your cardigan. So I started with the butt, now this part is the teeth that is going there, right? And, and what I'm going to do just to be in the safe side, I'm going to put this one as the stationary and I'm going to get this. Um, Hita Bukana said that it's always good to do at least three passes. I'm going to take this off. Oops. And what you can do, like, you, I normally don't like to use much, but this is a, a long fiber. So I can easily, this is a um, cord elastic. So I can just cut it off the part that is bad and use. So I'm going to go for my third and last pass. Just so. And I don't know why this is so short here. Why this is happening. Okay. So as you saw, it didn't work very well. And the reason I think it didn't work is because I was combing and the fiber folded on itself and that damaged my work. Normally I, I work with fibers that that are, that have a smaller staple than this long fiber. But that's a good example. And Robin talks about it. So I got a little bit more and I put it on the, the comb, just a little bit spray in there. And I put less this time, just to make it easier, right? And Robin says, you. Do this and you extend, you go further away from what you're doing. And then when you took most of this side, you go to the other side and you do it and there's nothing more coming. So this is better because it's less fiber. So the best for me is really to change hands and have the stationary always where the fiber is. So let's do this, this time learn with my mistakes <laughs> so i'm passing here so first i have much less fiber should listen to robin and second i am pulling i'm using the stable there and i'm still a little bit afraid of taking so i'm going to stop right here and I'm going to do my third comb and let's see how it's going to work this time All right it's better you see I have more longer here and I'm taking care I'm being careful to pull the fiber all the way And I'm trying to get as much as possible out of here. And just for the sake today, this is good enough. So the three teachers are, um, they all say that we should use a concave these to take the fiber. And this is going to make a more smooth um, top. So when I got my comb, I got one of this, but it broke. So I got some in the supermarket and I asked my husband to make a hole, but he didn't do it yet. 
Um, one other teacher that talked about different breeds, mostly English breeds, um, she says she uses um, the gauge, the knitting gauge as it is. And I liked it because I always have a knitting gauge with me. Always. So the other thing that Robin says is that you should uh, always seat to pull the fiber if you are pulling it with your hand. But I, I always do this from here. If it's a stationary, it's okay, you can stand, but not, if not, if you're just pulling with your hands, you should be sitting to pull. I really recommend her video, it's great. I, I really liked, I learned a lot with her. You're gonna choose the size of the, the hole that you want, depending on how thick you want the yarn. If you want the thin, the thinner the yarn, the smaller the hole. And you are going to, get a yarn that is thinner than this, of course. The other thing you should do is before, sorry, before you, you start, you should just put this, fluff up this, and that will make it easier for you to dis the fiber out. And I'm going to pull just with a, a regular number four here. Because I don't have a concave one, I'm going to use this one for this. One thing Robin says is that, it, it's amazing, the video is, is really good. One thing she says is that you should not pull it too close and you should always pull the staple of your fiber. And the other thing is you pull down, just to be sure that fiber is not going to get there. In one section of her video, she talks about blending with the comb. And she says that when you're blending, it's very important to use uh, fibers that are the same staple. Um, I saw a YouTube video where the person was combing different fibers with different staples. And what she did is she just put it closer to the bottom. Right. Um, another thing that I thought was interesting on her video is that she mentioned that you could use the comb to separate fiber that have two different coats. So if you want to take the hair out of uh, an Icelandic, you can use the comb to take the hair out because the hair is longer, it's the first thing you can pull it out. So. This is my very frail top, but to spin it, it's going to be good. It's going to be really good. So what I wanted to talk about too is that I just used a little bit of water to diminish the, um, the amount of, of uh, static. Okay, but some people, they do a mix and Robin Russell has this mix recipe in her video uh, with oil. I don't like to put oil in anything and if you are, if you do, because it's your take, it's your fiber, it's your yarn, just remember that like she does, she combs the one day and then she spins the next day. Because if you comb one day and gets it back in two weeks, it's going to be a very greasy yarn. So, you know, you better check. The other thing, like, um, so this is the top I made into a bird's nest and it's ready to, to spin. Whatever ways that you have, you can sometimes use it for comb. Like, because this is a, a, a long fleece, I would just cut this little parts off and I would put it on the carter and then do. Or you can also use it for needle felting or whatever you want, okay? Normally, what I do is when I get a fiber that is uh, like this, and this fiber was very dirty. It's the one that I dyed before. So I use the, the hand combs just to prepare it, and I got this this fluffy thing here that is clean it has no debris 
and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this through the carder. So that's another use of the comber, if you, the comb. The, yeah, so if you want to prepare your fiber, take off all the, the dirt that was there. And this is a fiber that my friend Chris gave me. We were talking and she thinks it was uh, a baby Lincoln. So a lamb. So this is another use for that. Um, so this is the part that I, I showed you. I hope you, you learned a, a little bit or you got something out of it. But I'm going to now spin some stuff worth it for you. So let me just take this out of here. And we're going to start with spinning. It's, I, I think it's very interesting that there are some views and some sayings, for example, if you have a, a long fiber, you do short draw. If you have a short fiber, you do long draw. That would be the rule of thumb. But there are exceptions and you have to see the yarn that you want and how you want it done. But what I wanted to show you today is, let me put my, always put your comb away, protect it because they are very sharp. And if you have dogs or animals like I do, or children, not dogs or animals, <laughs> they're babies, um, you better keep it away. So. The first thing we're going to do is, oh, that's this one. I'm going to spin different uh, fibers or different tops and just for you to see how it works. And I'm going to begin with preparing my, the lead on my bobbin because I learned this from Sarah Anderson. And I thought that was really good. Just one second. So when you're spinning worsted, it gets it gives you a very dense yarn. That means a very heavy yarn. So because it's dense, the tendons. And, and I did this, I got some fiber and I wanted to test my capacity of doing a, a, a draw that was homogeneous for a thick draw. And the yarn turned out very, very heavy. And I have the same fiber, it was a blue face laster that I was working with for the first time. And I did a thin um, yarn. So when you are doing worsted, you can do a thick yarn, but in general, you're trying to do a thin yarn. When you're doing, trying to do a thin yarn, it's better to start with a lace bobbin like this that is thicker and smaller than a regular bobbin, okay? If you do not have a bobbin, uh, a lace bobbin yarn, I love them. Those are the ones that I use more. What you can do is you can buy this uh, pipe insulation and you can put around. This is for a Brazilian spinning wheel that has a very strong draft. It pulls in like crazy. So I'm trying to figure out ways to diminish the intake um, of the fiber so that I can spin it because I do like the size of the bobbins and I like the spinning wheel. So that's what I started spinning with many, many years ago. So in this case, I'm going to do with this one because I'm saving my lace bobbins for another blend that I'm working on. So for showing today, I'm going to use this one. Uh, first thing is how to put the lead on your bobbin. So all you do is you put it like this. But if you do it like this, when you start spinning, this is going to move and you're not going to be able to spin. It's not going to do the intake. So what you do, you pass it once more through and you pull it 
and now it is firm, so you can see. So this is from Sarah Anderson's video on blocks of spinning or spinning blocks. And the other thing that she mentions there, she doesn't like to, to have um, a knot at the end or a curve. And I think it's a great idea, mainly when you're applying, because when you're applying and you get at the end of the ply, this comes out very naturally out of the fiber. Most people, uh, I know because I was selling uh, on the OHS Ontario Hand Spinner Seminar some fiber, they like tops that are with this thickness, right? But I also have some sleevers and yesterday I was spinning with them and I thought, oh my gosh, this is so relaxing and it goes so easy. So I'm going to spin both because I want to show different characteristics for you or different ways. So when you are starting, you just put the fiber there and just let it roll in the beginning. And when you're applying, it will naturally come off. Oh, oh sometimes my spinning wheel does that. It didn't put it properly. So just one second. And I'll get this off. So since we are here, some people say that the way of joining is to get the fiber out, split it, and to split the other fiber, and then you put it there and there, and you start spinning again, giving twist, and that's what will happen, right? Um, I don't like to put it like that. So normally when I'm spinning, unless it's a very hard one that has a lot of twists, but if not, if it breaks, I just put it on the bottom and then I go and spin from there. Some people have that thing that you put on the side and then you push down. It doesn't work always for me. So those are the two ways that I normally use, but putting it down and pushing is my favorite way, okay? So when you're spinning worsted, what it means is that you are not allowing the twist to get into the fiber. Uh, you are holding the fiber so that it doesn't go through your fingers. So my fingers are keeping the fiber, the twist here and not coming to the source. So you have two ways to do this. You can do a, a short, long draw. And for me, for this fiber at least, it works better to do a short back draw. This is Cordeo. Cordeo is a cross of Merino and Lincoln. And so it is a longer fiber than the the merino it is still soft not as soft as the merino but it has luster and everything it's a fiber that you can use for for anything so for this as you can see it works so well all i have to do is pull the fiber a little bit and it keeps the same print and it just goes nicely so i love spinning sleeves now, some tricks that I learned with, um, with Sarah Anderson. First of all, just soften up a little bit your, your fiber. And she says that you should never uh, split your yarn, because your fiber, your top, because you pay the big bucks for that. But the thing, Another teacher said is because the way the fibers are, mainly if you haven't dyed it yet or watered, 
uh, are the best way for you to get them into a real uh, worsted spun yarn. Because the moment you wash them, they move a little bit, right? But I think what she said was very interesting, so I just put it there and I'm spinning some. One hint, because normally if you are spinning, you can get that fiber to go in one area only. And that's nice if I want, for example, in this uh, top that has different colors, and I, if I want to get all the green first, I can just go on spinning like this, right? And then when I think it's getting out of the color that I want, I can just flip the, the um, top and incline a little bit, and then it's going to get to the other side. So sometimes when we are spinning, what happens is you, you get to a point and then it goes down and down and down. So to avoid that, all you have to do is once you got down to the one side that you are, so I'm still up here, right? So let me spin a little bit more in this area. Just a little bit more. So now I'm getting to the point that it's starting to, the side is smaller, right? It has been spun more. So I just flip my yarn and I inclined it a little bit. And naturally, when I'm spinning, it's going to pick up the thing. So with this fiber that is a little bit thicker, I prefer to do a short front draw. So if you notice, I am pulling with my finger the fiber from the fiber source. So this is a short front draw. So I am pulling with this hand the fiber out of my source. When I was using the sliver, My tendency is to just pull it a little bit and it just gets nicely. So the sliver is really, for me, a nicer to spin. When you're checking for uh, if you have the, the amount of twist you do, you want, Everybody says you have to check it from here. So once you have spun, you put it out and you check the amount of twist that you have. Obviously, it doesn't have twisted enough. So I am a lazy traveler. I need to travel faster. The other thing is that it doesn't make much sense, but for me, but once it gets into the bobbin, once it passes this area, it diminishes the amount of twist. So if you want to use, to check the twist in front, you can, but you have to have in mind that that's going to be less twist than you have. So let's try it again, but now I'm traveling a little bit faster. The other thing I could do is I could diminish the, the fly there and get a smaller whorl and this way it would put more skin in my fiber. But I think this is going to be okay. I see that most people, what they have is they put too much twist in the yarn. That was not my case. I have always put too little twist in the yarn. So now if we want to check, you can check it from here, and now you see we have more twist. 
still could use some more because it's still showing the thick and thin there. The other thing is when you do a three ply, and I like to do three plies more than two plies, um, you end up getting a better level of yarn, not necessarily a thicker yarn, but a better level of yarn. So let's try this. Take this out. Doesn't work very well for me. Judy Mackenzie makes it and it looks nice. <laughs> Not that nice to me, but let's try just this three ply. So if you look at the six, the three ply, it's a little bit more homogeneous than, than the other one. And when you take it from the three bobbins, it works better. Okay? The other thing I wanted to show you, so when you're spinning from the big, um, the big top, you can use this thing of moving one side or the other, like mainly when you have a top that has different colors like that, also to get the color that you want. So if you want more of the same color coming, you can use that to achieve that goal just by keeping it or a little bit twisted like this or using it straight and let it go on one side or the other so it's up to you um, the other thing i wanted to show you today and i think it's the last thing is i am spinning this is 50% um, yak, 50% merino. Yak is a very short fiber. It's a luxury fiber. And it will have a, a haze. So if you go with the, the regular rule that says that short fibers, you spin with a long draw and long fibers you spin with a short draw you would use a long uh, long draw to spin this but i had a class on on the ontario hand spinner seminar last beginning of june and i had cashmere spinning and we did some tests of spinning cashmere that is a very short uh, fiber too uh, with long draw and also with uh, a short draw with smoothing the yarn or a short draw not allowing the uh, allowing the, the twist to come in so normally i don't use an apron but because this fiber is short it goes everywhere just like cashmere so i do use the apron to keep the fibers more or less here the other thing that i did is instead of getting everything out of the bag I get a little bit and that's what I'm going to spin because I started as I normally do just pulling it and it was fiber going everywhere and that's not the goal the other thing is um, I want to be sure I'm going to put a lot of twist because this is a, a a very small fiber if you look at the staple the big one is the merino but you still have um, short ones I don't think you can see let me see the big one is the merino but the the yak is is very small very narrow so and the other thing um, my spinning wheel has been used so long and so much that I ate the wood there a little bit. And what it makes is it makes the thing comes down. But instead of fixing it by attaching more, my husband put a piece of leather there to make it hold because it ate the wood there. Because I really like to spin and I spin a lot. 
So instead of fixing it, I decided not to because if I put it a little bit lower and marked the area that is good for certain fibers, it spins more and it gives more twists. So even though Sarah Anderson said that we should not get a top and, and separate it, for me, for this fiber, I think it works better if I separate in very thin layers. So, sorry, I had spun this before, so the twist is doing it now. Let me just get a little bit more. Let's try it again. So, as you see, I just put it underneath. And I just let it go and I'm going to do a three ply for this and so the three ply is going to keep it on the like this is a harder fiber to spin like I'm more careful it was much more relaxing to spin the Corydeus lever this one I'm a little bit more aware of it so I am spinning, traveling faster because I wanted to have more, more twists. I have uh, taken all the, the breaks out of it so I don't want any tension because I want it to twist more and more. One trick to have it to twist is you can put oil, a little bit of oil in the metal thing that is here that you put the your bobbin on so so as i said you have to see what works for you for me for this fiber i like to do this like some people like to prepare the, the fiber in the sense that they pre-draft it, like they pull it apart a little bit. And okay, it doesn't work for me. When I'm spinning, it breaks, it doesn't get the same crimp, it's just the same length. It, it just doesn't work for me. But if it works for you, that's great. It works for many people. It doesn't work for me. So basically, that's it. That's what I wanted to show you today about combing. I hope it helps. Um, I do suggest that you check the Robin Russell video on combing uh, at Interweave. And if you watch the other people, it's always good to have different perspectives of it. Um, this is what I got from them. This is what I use now. Um, you saw that I made a bobo when combing the long um, fiber, the long staple fiber. Um, but I'm leaving it there so that you don't make the bobo. And sure enough, Robin Russell said that you do have to put it very apart to avoid the, the fiber to get back into itself. And I did it. So it's just good to be aware. Okay? So I hope it helped. Um, next time we're going to be talking, uh, next time for spinning, we're going to be talking on combing. Okay? Hope to see you there. Bye. It's a kill. É um pouquinho de passear.